I feel like every single time we focus on the fact that biracial people have multiple identities as the main story of blackness, we like, it's like it creates this thing where black blackness becomes a monolith. And it's like, girly, if you cannot see the privilege that you're sitting on to be someone who is consistently like given roles because of your racial ambiguity, I don't know what else to say. Like. Hi, welcome to Maya's world. So, I was feeling really bright and colorful today. I am actually about to make a video about astrology. Hopefully, I'll finish it and put it up. I don't know. Okay y'all, so hi, my name is Maywa. If you are new to my channel, I like to talk about things or pertaining to pop culture and how it relates to our everyday lives. Today, okay, so one of my mutuals had sent me something that I found very, very interesting, okay? So um, if y'all don't know who Gina Torres is, she's a famous actress. She was in, I remember her in, what's that movie with Chris Rock in it? I remember she was playing the wife. I that was like the movie I remember. She was in The Matrix. You know, so she's been around for a while. She's, she's a famous actress. And I think she was in like some kind of table talk discussion. And she had mentioned how essentially she doesn't feel like she never identified as a black woman. And this is ironic because she took up a lot of roles that was intended for black women. But I wanted to play you all the interview so you can see it first, and then I'm going to give my thoughts and critiques. I don't know if I'm allowed to play the whole clip without my video getting demonetized, so I'm gonna just probably play the audio and um, we'll watch it together so I can like, yeah. Gina, you were forced to embrace one identity in Hollywood, uh -huh. right? <laughs> I, I feel like I was living in three worlds. There was my world that I grew up in, also Spanish-speaking, home, Cuban parents, and then you go out into the world, and, and I'm speaking English, and I'm in the Bronx, uh, South Bronx, Did having you know? a great time. That's right. <laughs> yes. And then going into this industry as an, as an actress, then nobody recognizes you as either one. Yeah. There was mm -hmm. no place for me as a Latina. And then as a black woman, I just, I didn't identify as a black woman because for me it was, it was cultural. Right. Mm -hmm. Because of course I present black, I am a black woman, I am also Cuban. When you're here in the United States and they ask you to be in a box mm -hmm. and you don't fit into the box, mm -hmm. culturally it was different. It was not one that I identified with. But to work, to survive, it was something that I had to learn, mm -hmm. to then learn to be whatever black was, mm -hmm. and then feel like I was alienating that other part of myself, that Latina self. It just kind of became a, a, a Jedi mind trick mm -hmm. to, to keep myself from just being sad all the time oh, about yeah. not being. Okay, so let me, because I already know, like, but let me put this out there, okay? I am not critiquing her acting skills i'm not critiquing the way she looks i'm not critiquing because y'all are gonna be like she's not a bad person like she i'm not i'm asking us to have discourse i'm asking us to like think critically and try to and try to envision what this what this does to people who are monoracially black and then particularly people who are dark skinned because i feel like what she said is really offensive to all the african-american women who auditioned for roles that they were hoping to get and it was giving to given to someone who actually doesn't identify as black but she definitely was going to those castings that was saying she was black like if she i feel like if she wanted to feel and experience life as a biracial person, then she could, I don't know, maybe just audition for all the roles that are for biracial. If she like really was so pressed about being black and doesn't and didn't like it, I feel like she didn't like who was who was forcing you? And something that something I found really interesting that she said, and I want to speak to, is when she said, like, when I came to America and there's like all these boxes. So if you are new to my channel, I've lived in a lot of different countries. I've lived in England, I've lived in Germany, I've lived in uh, Nigeria, I grew up here in Atlanta, and I've just traveled a lot. And something that I find really interesting about like discourse globally 
is this impression that like Americans put you in boxes, like more boxes than like in other places. And I feel like when they say that, they mean it particularly around race. So I feel like really what they're saying is like when you're in America, because you're black, people see you in a certain way. And I feel like that's really insulting because I feel like as someone who grew up here in America, I feel like America, African American, African American people created the language that most of us in foreign countries used to help explain our identities. African American thought is the reason that a lot of us are able to uh, make sense of things going on in the world. Like when I was living in Germany, people were talking so much about intersectionality, which was coined by Kimberly Crenshaw, an African American woman who helped put all these complex thoughts into something that we can, we can say and we can reference. So when people say, oh, in America, I was put in a box. Like, I just kind of, I wonder what that really means. And I think what she means is that as a biracial person, she feels like she has to pick between her black side and her white side, which to be honest, at this point, I really have a violin. Because if I hear this rhetoric, it's like every movie, every interview, every, like, I've, I'm so tired of the like picking between the two frustrations always being at the forefront of black discourse. And this is why it's so important to specify and to be honest about your, your situation, because if you are biracial, you actually have two sides and I'm not downplaying the complexities that come with it, but as a black person who only looks black in every country, I, I of course have things that I struggle with, but it's not going to be about what my race is. And I feel like it, um, the, the biracial, the biracial, uh, complex, of like being two things or being multiple things becomes the center focus of like the hardest struggle of blackness when blackness is actually just being only black. It's just being only black, you guys. So, okay, so Gina Torres is an Afro-Latina. Um, something that I've noticed, I am not an Afro-Latina. I am a Nigerian person, grew up, raised in America, right? So I'm, I'm socialized in an African-American perspective, okay? But something that I've noticed within Afro-Latina discourse is, okay, if you Google, if you go online and you pull up like Afro, like famous Afro-Latinas, let's just do it together. If you go online and you Google famous Afro-Latinas, the people that come up is Zoe Saldana, Rosero Dawson, Lala Anthony, Cardi B, Rosie Perez. Like, I feel like the people who you see when you think of Afro-Latina are literally people who look biracial mixed rates are, are very very light and i i've spoken with other people who i know who are afro latina who are black latina um and they talk about the erasure that happens of dark-skinned people one thing about me i understand colorism and i feel like colorism it exists globally and it manifests itself in different countries there is colorism in nigeria and there's going to be colorism in germany there's going to be colorism in the u.s and there's going to be colorism in brazil and all of those things have different nuances and different triggers and different and i think um the 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 confusion or the the erasure i think happens when people think of the word afro latina as meaning like afro as black and latina as white to be mixed and so i feel like it becomes the the main thought is that they're mixed race and i i also noticed the same thing when i was living in germany because there's a phrase called afro deutsch which means afro german and sometimes people think Afro as in black, Deutsch as in white Germans mixing. So there becomes an erasure that when I was talking to black Germans, they're telling me their experience of how like they're completely left out of, of Afro German uh, history uh, discussions because they're because it essentially just, essentially just um, prioritizes and focuses on people who are mixed race. And I feel like this is an example of that same thing with Afro Latina and the way that colorism exists. And I might even go, this might be kind of embarrassing, but it's honest to admit, Oh, up until a couple years back, I don't know, maybe I was in like my early 20s or something, when I really deep that there were dark-skinned uh, Latino people, his, like, I didn't know that there were so many dark-skinned people in Brazil or so many dark-skinned people in Colombia or so many dark-skinned people, like, I didn't realize that there are black people who look like me in Colombia. 
And then when I had realized that, I realized that I saw that there was an erasure that happens to where we want people like Gina Torres, we want people like Zoe Saldana, we want racially ambiguous people to be at the forefront. And that's why I say colorism is a global issue because it's not just something that happens in the U.S. It's also something that happens in uh, like in South America. It's something that happens in Nigeria. Like in and I've also too I've heard Nigerian actresses who are biracial say the same thing that Gina Torres said, which is where like oh I feel like both my identities aren't seen. And it's like girly. If you cannot see the privilege that you're sitting on to be someone who is consistently like given roles because of your racial ambiguity, I don't know what else to say. Like it's actually really embarrassing and it's very insulting to people who are black, especially African American women. Because I feel like this is how I look at it. You're a guest in their house, right? Like you are a guest in their house. So you cannot come, you cannot be a guest in their house. Like imagine someone came into your house, you fed them every single day for 10 years and they want to go back later and say in an interview, oh yeah, mm, she overcooks her chicken and I didn't even really like her food. Embarrassing. My good sister, why are you saying this? Like so many black people have cheered and championed you from the beginning for you to just now say this nonsense. It was, I was really, and then for her, they started off laughing. <laughs> Shut up. Ah, God. So yeah, that's like something that I, I noticed. Also, another thing I wanted to speak to, race and ethnicity is kicking our asses. It is, it is, we are, we are fighting for our lives trying to understand what the difference between race and ethnicity is. It is actually annoying at this point. And I'm gonna do the, the breakdown, bro. Race is how you are perceived. Race is how you are perceived. So if you see someone, you say, boom, that is a white person. You see someone, you say, boom, that is a black person. You see someone, you say, boom, that is a South Asian person, right? That is race. Ethnicity is like the Cuban. Ethnicity is Hispanic. You cannot be racially Hispanic. You can be a white Hispanic. You can be a black Hispanic. You can be, you know what I'm saying? But saying, oh, I'm to be Cuban. Like Cuban what, girl? There's black Cubans. Like when you say, oh, I'm Cuban. Cuban what? Black or white? You know what I'm saying? Like give me, give me the details. Give me, you can even say I'm racially, like a racially ambiguous Cuban. Like whatever, bro. But like when y'all say like, I, it's like, I don't know. And I think maybe too, because I've lived in countries where blacks are not the minorities and what ends up happening is like their voice becomes so small because obviously with the hierarchy of stuff, you know, white voices is going to be heard and then biracial identity is going to be heard. And then all the black people, like when people say like, I know so many like black Austrian people, no one's even thinking that black people looking like me would be in Austria or look or like in Hungary. When I went to Hungary, like nobody ever thinks. So when you say, oh, they're Hungarian. Hungarian what? Black Hungarian, white Hungarian, like it's, what, what's the, give me, give me, give me the sauce, give me the details. So when she, like, I feel like she also doesn't understand race or ethnicity. And I just, yeah, like I said, it's a slap in the face. It's, it's kind of, I don't know, girl. I was just like, girl, why are you out here saying it? And like this whole thing of like wanting to be the victim because you have multiple identities. Like, I feel like every single time we focus on the fact that biracial people have multiple identities as the main story of blackness we like it's like it creates this thing where black blackness becomes a monolith because it's almost like we are the ones adding the pressure for you to pick i don't know sometimes i feel like people kind of portray African american discourse on race as bullying and as someone who i don't know i i just feel like African-American discourse is liberating for me. And it's like globally liberating. Like y'all don't put some respect on the name. Like y'all can't be acting like uh, you're not a lot of the things, a lot of the realizations you have doesn't come from African-American culture. So, you know what I'm saying? And I, and another thing I wanted to mention, sorry, last thing, <laughs> there are so many dark skinned Afro Latinas that we like don't even know. Uh, like the guy from Insecure, like one of my mutuals had shared, like the guy from Insecure, like he's Afro Latina. So like, does he come to America and he says, oh yeah, like I feel like my identity as an Afro-Latina isn't seen. No, right? Because he knows that he is a black person. So he's not given, he's not afforded the ability to be seen as anything else but black. And that's like the thing about being black globally. You're just always seen as just black. And I think we see that as a, it's like a, you know, it depends on the, on the thing, but that's the, re like being black is just being black. That's it. It doesn't mean you're morally bad. Saying someone does, saying someone looks, Racially ambiguous isn't saying that they're, they're a goat, they're a stinking goat. Like it's just saying that they're racially ambiguous. You, it's like, I don't know, just like if you, if you wanna just, if you're biracial, say you're biracial. If you're black, say you're black. If you're white, say you're white. 
when you're white, you're not telling me I'm I'm Spanish, Italian. It, just just say what you are. Everybody wants to be multi-culti, multi Calm down. Just just be real. How do people see you in this world? That's all it's saying. How do people see you in this world? That's it. That's it's not a moral decision. Just just say your race. It's okay. So yeah, that was what I had to say. Um, let me know how y'all felt when you saw the video. And if you made it to the end, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm in really in a gassed mood, right? Because I was really feeling my makeup, you know, feeling, feeling my complexion, feeling the nappy hair, feeling the headscarf. Yeah, so let me know what you like. Thanks for watching. Bye.